from New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, I don't like it. And, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing racker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, I might tell you that uh, I have been sent this story. Several of you sent it in. It appeared on the MSN website, msn.com, and was originally published in Marie Claire magazine, which is a chick mag. And um, I must tell you that uh, it is another example, boys, of why you don't want to get married. And you don't. I mean, I keep telling you you don't. And when you hear... The attitude some women have about marriage, this should tell you everything you want to know. Everything. Let me read it to you. This piece, which you can find on msn.com if you'd like to read along with me, is called The Starter Husband by Gretchen Voss. Let me read to you. Gretchen Voss says, I'm just really not ready to be committed like this. That's what Andy said to Tucker, her husband of 11 months, after she came home from a crazy day at work two years ago with an overwhelming urge to quit her marriage. Today, right now, she said, this just isn't for me. She spoke stoically. No tears, no histrionics. She had been imagining this moment since she moved out of their condo a few months earlier. But she wanted to ease him into the inevitable, to somehow tiptoe her way through the minefield of Tucker's emotions. But now, having scored a direct hit with those crushing words, she watched Tucker crumple against the dining room table. I don't understand, he said over and over. We're married. That was Tucker. Softening her voice, but not her position, Andy said, Look, we can do this now, or we can do this five years from now, and it's a lot messier. I want a divorce. Looking at Tucker's ashen face, she thought, The guy didn't really do anything to deserve this. He must think I'm a monster. Watching her husband shuffle to the door of her temporary apartment... Andy felt awful, but mostly she felt unbelievably relieved. I was married for like two seconds. That's what Andy says to me today, her enormous blue eyes crinkling as she recounts her drive through union. And now here's the quote. This is so great. She said, it was literally an entry-level marriage. An entry-level marriage. There you go. Says here, we're sitting in a cafe in a funky Boston neighborhood known for its liberal attitudes and alternative lifestyles. This is where gay couples raise their children. 
And yet women are actually swiveling in their seats doing indiscreet 180s to get a look at the impeccably coiffed blonde-haired woman saying such things. Hearing her words, I flinch slightly. We're talking about an event that's supposed to be a turning point in life, and she sounds so cavalier. And yet, Andy is only articulating what the one in five women under age 30 who get divorced every year must think. After graduating from college, Andy jetted off to culinary school in Paris, then switched to journalism, where she climbed the ranks, moving from one semi-glamorous job to the next, all the while hooking up, dating, dumping, and moving on. She's a perfectly modern gal. A gal. <laughs> a gorgeous mass of neuroses and contradictions. The kind who never pictured herself married by 27, divorced by 28, and remarried with two toddlers at 35. <laughs> Sounds insane. At best. But along the way, it says here, she met Tucker. She says, he was what I was supposed to marry. He was what everyone else in my life wanted for me and what the world tells you you're supposed to want. I got sucked into the idea. I was in my 20s, and I felt like there was so much pressure for my family to find the perfect person. I just felt like, God, I'd be stupid if I didn't do this. Within months of promising to love, honor, and cherish Tucker forever, she knew she had made a huge mistake. The problem? He was boring. Wholly uncomplicated, as she puts it. Of course, didn't you get to know the guy before you married him, you bitch? The kind of guy who reads Tom Clancy books on the couch and watches Adam Sandler movies while dreaming of white picket fences. Going to depressing French movies, leapfrogging over the less ambitious on the company ladder, those were the things that excited Andy. She says, The idea of spending my life with someone like that seems stifling. It finally just got to me that he was so... sunny. I hoist my drank in that you-go-girl kind of way. That's good. You-go-girl. That's wonderful. But I'm struck by her casual disregard for the institution. Marriage used to be a big deal. How could she slip in and out of it so easily? She'd plotted along for nearly 12 months, passive-aggressively avoiding her relationship by consuming herself with the restaurant openings and black-tie benefits that were part of her job. But then Tucker started talking about having children. She says, to me, once you have kids, you can't get out. When he began asking about a family, I felt like that was too final of a commitment. That's when I had to say, okay, I've got to fish or cut bait here. Hey, wait a minute. Marriage is a final commitment, you idiot. Did you listen to any of the moronic words that you pledged to follow? To love, to honor, to cherish, to give yourself completely till death do you part? What's more final than till death do you part? Oh, yeah, till death do we part, but, uh, oh, a family? No, that's too much of a commitment. Uh uh. Says here her own parents split up when she was three, and she didn't want to condemn another generation to that hell. Andy and Tucker got divorced almost a year to the day they had vowed to be together forever. Oh, my God, it was so easy, she says, exhaling loudly. I realized I can get out of this, and he can get out of this, and we can get on with our lives. They sold the condo and split the profits, and that was that. She felt bad about hurting his feelings, but she never doubted her decision. I raise an eyebrow. Never, she repeats. Andy takes a throaty slug of her second raspberry martini, picks at her fish taco. <laughs> Fill in your own joke there. Then sits back in her chair. I think marriage is the new dating, and having kids is the new marriage, she proclaims loudly, as yet another woman dining with her partner turns to stare. It's true, she said, I wouldn't have married him if I didn't think I could get out of it. And I know a lot of women feel this way. I know it. I know it. Says here, despite how it sounds, Andy is not a first-class bitch. 
She's the type who will hunt down the most perfectly thoughtful baby gift or whisk you off to a much-needed Manny Patty after your boss goes nuclear on you. But when it comes to relationships, her attitude is pure pragmatism. There we go, pure pragmatism. Clearly, she'd screwed up. Best to press delete. And I bet there isn't a married woman out there, if she's really honest, who hasn't flirted with the thought of doing the same. I know there have been days in my own five-year marriage when I've dreamed of reclaiming my freedom. Not many, but a few. But then I wake up, not just because I love the guy and I'm damn lucky to have him, but because I'm married. That is supposed to mean something. Well, yes, yes it is. Andy was my introduction to the concept of an icebreaker marriage, but certainly not my last. Burning through a starter husband is almost becoming a rite of passage. While newly marrieds everywhere fear the one in two marriages fail statistic, the more relevant stat is that while the median age at which a woman first marries is 25, the median age at which she first divorces is 29. In fact, 20% of marriages fail within five years. And of those, one in four and within two years. So much for until death do us part. I don't have to look far in my own life to find human faces that bear out the numbers. One of my best friends from college barely scratched out a two-year union following her six-figure Hawaiian wedding. My brother managed to eke out almost 29 months before he and his betrothed packed it up for Splitsville. Their divorces were good things, believe me. Still, I was miffed that they got married in the first place. These relationships were never the stuff of happily ever after. Of course, our generation can afford to chuck the Cinderella story when the glass slipper doesn't fit. While our grandmothers were forced to remain shackled to unhappy unions for monetary reasons, most women today have the financial wherewithal to cry uncle and bolt whenever we get uncomfortable. That's great. So why should we guys agree to get married? Why? Why? The writer goes on to say, and I'm not going to read you the whole story, just a little bit more here. For some, a starter husband is like a starter home. A semi-commitment where you're willing to do some of the surface work, like painting the walls, but not the heavy lifting, like gutting the whole foundation. He's just not a long-term investment. Others compare a starter husband to a first job, where you learn some skills and polish your resume before going after the position you really want. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Please tell me what you think about that, would you please? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I chose to stay a virgin for my own personal reasons. Why'd you stop being a virgin then? Because I needed it. <laughs> you needed it. Hell yeah. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from New York City at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. One week from today, our show will be coming to you from London, England. We're going to spend the week in London. And we're going to be there for the uh, the historic first ever National Hockey League games played outside of North America. The Los Angeles Kings playing the Anaheim Ducks at the O2 Arena in London, England. And this will be the uh, kickoff of the NHL 2007-2008 season. They've never done this outside of North America before. Never. God only knows what it's going to be like, but we're going to be there when it happens. So uh, you will uh, hear our first show from London next Monday at our regular time. For God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yes, there are women out there who uh, actually have a term for this, starter marriages. What do you think about that? This is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Good. Hey, I'm so glad you're addressing this topic. Uh, I'm the victim of a starter marriage. Uh, I'm 33 years old. My wife and I got married when uh, she was 24, so that was two years ago. Uh, no kids, but apparently for no reason, uh, she had met a guy at the gym, started seeing him, and uh, our divorce will be final next month. Uh, 
you know, it's unexplainable how selfish these women are nowadays when it comes to uh, the sanctity of marriage and just doing whatever they feel like. We pay well, that's why I tell you, why would you get, why would you get married? Why would you get married as a man? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, you know what? I totally agree with you. And you know, fortunately, we didn't have any kids, but I've been listening to you for probably the last two to two to three years. And there's no advantage to a man getting married. And in addition to this, I have to buy her out of a house that she wouldn't have even had without me. I have to pay her uh, a minimum amount of alimony. I have to give her half of whatever we accumulated. And, you know, for two years, she's getting about $55,000 for nothing. And how much of that did she put in? You know, I make about uh, three times as much as her. So on a monthly basis... Uh, after she got some spending money and, and some money went to a car, I had about $800 left over of her money to put towards uh, the house finances with a mortgage of about 3400 car payment, other bills. So it was very minimal. But you know what? That's the law in California. There's nothing a man can do about it. So, oh, there is something a man can do about it. Don't get married. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you're addressing this because the starter marriage phenomenon is, is rampant with with people and especially women who are getting married when they're 24, 25 years old. Well, I think that especially has to do with these women who watch, uh, you know, uh, whether it be Britney Spears doing it or some of the other chicks in Hollywood yeah, uh, who get married and they make a big deal about it for Entertainment Tonight or for TMZ or whatever. And then they ultimately end up getting divorced, and it's no big deal. I remember, yeah. what's her name, Renee Zellweger did this uh, when she got married. She got married. Kenny says me. Right. How long did that last? I mean, women see this, and then that's what they imitate. Yeah, she, uh, I mean, every man out there has had their heart broken, and this was the first serious time. I. She had no explanation. She was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, she's sorry she got caught. That was the only thing, and thank God we didn't have any kids. You know, we had two miscarriages, but, you know, that was, you know, that was a blessing in disguise, ironically. Of course it was. Yeah, so I'm but look how much you had to pay her just to get rid of her. Uh, it's going to be a little over fifty thousand dollars, and for and that's without attorneys. We, you know, we agreed on a sum without. I just knew attorneys would take every last penny. So I'm like, look, let's just settle on something. Let me get rid of you. Let me never have to talk to you again. And that's the end of it. So uh, you know, I learned my lesson. And uh, I will think twice before that, before I get married again, because there's no advantage to a man. And at least in California, there's no, unless you marry a woman who has some money and is bringing something to the table, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of suckers out there. So I'm glad you're addressing this topic, definitely. Thank you for that. Okay, Tom. I appreciate uh, the call. Can you... All right, it's 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, yes, starter marriages. There are women who have, the, they have this idea that the, their first marriage is like you're having a starter husband. Well, we'll try this. If it doesn't work out, eh, you know. Let's say hello here to Gigi on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement? Oh, hi. I, I, it broke up. Hi, I'm Gigi from Ventura. All right, I just I... said that. I'm sorry, I, I, it broke up. I didn't hear that. I, I think that I, you're absolutely right. That I, I love you, by the way. You're great. Thank um, you. These women are bitches, bitchy skanks, and they have nothing going on but, you know, their mani petties and the fish tacos. That was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, raspberry martinis. I mean, come on, you know. I mean, there are beautiful girls out there with careers that – you know, or walking their dog at the park, and they're not, like, going to the mall spending $100 on their nails every five minutes and bleaching their hair and getting fake boobs. I mean, there are decent girls out there, but there are a whole new wave of women out to get anything they can. They don't take marriage seriously at all, and I think I feel really sorry for that Brian guy. She's a bitch. And I just want to say... Open your eyes, guys, before you marry these high-maintenance, overstimulated women. You know, if they're looking like, you know, they're needy, they probably are. They're not going to, you know, they're going to get bored after a while and leave you. Go with a more stable, decent girl. Go to the Midwest. <laughs> it's just really hard out here. Yeah, but the girls in the Midwest, I, you know, I hate to say this. No, I love to say it because it's true. The girls in the Midwest are in the Midwest for a reason. The hot chicks from the Midwest, they all leave for L.A., Dallas, Miami. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people from back east, and they're, they're just not like that, you know? 
it's just, it, I know there are a lot of decent girls out there, but I think the, I, my point for calling you is I think the guys should open their eyes a little bit and, you know, not be so taken in by these beautiful girls. You know, there's other beautiful girls out there, but if they are so neat, if they're carrying a $4,000 purse, do a double take, okay? That's ridiculous. Or just you know? pop them and dump them. Exactly. That's their, exactly. Do it. And, you know, date these girls for a while, get a prenup. Don't just rush into marriage. And, and I'm really glad that Brian I didn't have any kids. It's horrible. There are yeah, a lot but, of but see, but see this story. This article in Marie Claire magazine, this is another example of why guys shouldn't even bother getting there. Why do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Unless unless your girl can bring something to the table, too, and contribute, and you've dated her for five years, and you feel good about it, or you have a prenup or something. I mean, absolutely. They're just going to run off with some other guy. They don't take marriage seriously at all. You know, in France, it takes two years to get divorced. Two years. You see, I think they should turn it around. I think in all countries it should take two years to get married. Yeah. And divorce absolutely. should be immediate. Absolutely. <laughs> they should all go to counseling first or something. But yeah, yes. there are these bitches there. You can spot them, I'm telling you. Nobody yeah. would say nobody would say, Oh, I can't believe this is final, isn't it? This is like for real if you had to stay married for two years. Exactly, exactly. So I just want to say I agree with you, and I think you're absolutely right, and I think I should open their eyes a little bit and look for these needy girls. They're just too much, too slight, Thank you. and they're going to run off. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Appreciate okay, the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hello, Dad. Hi, son. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm okay. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you. Finally, I've been trying for the last month and never got through, but I finally did today. Uh, I'm calling because I wanted your advice on getting married. You said before there were two reasons to get married. If you're going to have kids with that person or if you want to bring her to this country, right? If you want to have kids, uh, it's good for the kids. There's still no benefit to you. Yeah, but now, now yeah, if you want to bring to someone to this now. country and you want, but your but thing is, you have to be certain, certain that you you want to stay with this person forever. No, of course not. You're never because you're that. going to be paying for them forever. So you should be sure you want to have them forever. Yeah, but see, this is the thing. Um, Actually, I already signed up for the Navy, and I'm going to be shipping out in June, or July, actually, the 1st of July. And um, we get housing if we're married. So this is one That is not a good enough reason. Not enough reason? No, because you're going to end up paying a lot more by uh, being married than you would pay not being married. Yeah, but... Uh, I'll be getting, like, my check is going to be twice as much. Yeah, but <laughs> the fact is, you're only going to be keeping half of your check uh, if you get married anyway, which will leave you with what you have now. You said that it's, a, it's enough reason if you want to bring her here. That she's already and, here, it, she's... and you want to stay with her. Yeah, Watch your mouth, that... we're on the air. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, man... But I, oh, I don't know what this is. This is the now. woman who, this is the woman you want changing your bedpan, okay? I already explained this to her that I'm only getting married to her so that she gets it because I want to help her. We've been together for two years. Do you know that if you marry her, and I have experience with this, so I know about it, mm -hmm. she uh, has to agree, by the way. You signed a bunch of papers. Ever been to the INS, Jose? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of okay. course. Okay. Uh, All right. So you got to sign a bunch of papers. Which, papers you won't read. Yeah. No, actually, I understand how it works. I All right. How did, you tell me. How did, what am I going to say here? Tell me what I'm going to say here. The reason I know how it works is because my exam is liable for me for the next 10 years. That's right. Very good, Jose. So here's what happens. You, uh, she has to agree that she will not go on any public assistance for 10 years. No welfare, no food stamps, 
uh, no uh, Medi-Cal, nothing. And if she ever applies for that stuff, you know who's going to be paying for it? You. Yeah. You. Same as it would happen to my dad if I was ever to apply. Correct. Well, you wouldn't do. You wouldn't do that to your father. Of but course wi- not. Women you get married to, they don't feel the same obligation. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I really and, wanted to help her. And and what country is she from? Mexico. All right, so she will have a baby in nine months and one day. Correct. She will have a baby. In nine months and one day. No, 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 no. We already talked about that, too, and there is no babies in the next five years, at least. Really? She's got to be the only Mexican woman who's ever said that. Of course she wants to have a baby, but... um. But what makes you think she won't? Say what? What makes you think that she won't? Um, there are reasons to think that because, like I said, I already discussed this with her. And if she, in the, I listen to you, several, you know, several days of the week. And in, in the event of she getting pregnant, I have mentioned it, that I want an abortion. And, of course, she, she would say that, you know, she wouldn't want that. But I have the feeling that she would do it. If it's, like, right away. You have a feeling. Yeah, exactly. I'm not 100% sure, of course. Right. Back out. So well, now let's imagine the worst-case scenario. Okay. Let's imagine that uh, she says yes, 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 so that you'll marry her, and then she goes ahead and has a baby. And well, then the marriage doesn't work out. And yeah, then she can't afford to support herself and your baby. You know where she's coming for that money? You. But uh, the thing is that uh, I have low sperm count, so it's really unlikely for me to... Unlikely does not mean impossible. We've been together for two years and... You know what? It's unlikely that you will win the lottery. Yeah. But it's possible. It is. And you've seen people win, right? I have. Right. So it may be unlikely, in your opinion. That you will, uh, that you will have a baby, but it's not impossible. And what happens if it happens? I'm screwed. Let um, me give you. I let me tell you something you else. Know? Let me tell you something else, Jose. Okay. Yes. Listen carefully. Uh, which branch of the military are you in? The Navy. Navy. The yeah. U.S. Armed Forces are very effective at garnishing your wages. Yes, I know. I understand that, too. Yes. But so if is, you get to... She doesn't know anything about these housing payments. Until... She doesn't know it until she moves to the housing. You're off in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, and then she makes friends with the other military wives. See, including the, the ones... I discussed with her already, too, that when I'm shipped out, I want her to live with her mom. Well, you just said you'd get money for housing. Exactly. I get money for housing, but uh, I have my best friend, actually, he already shipped out, and he's the one who told me about it. But you understand, you'll get money for housing, but then you're going to have to use that money to support her. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Right. Yes. And the money it's going to cost you to support her is going to be more than you're going to get. That's what I was analyzing, and I wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think so? No, I would think that... How much are you going to get? Uh, we H- get how? 2000 2000 A month? A month? Yes, a month. Right. So how much do you think it's going to cost to support another person? She has to eat. She needs clothing. Does she she's own a like, car? She's... She's independent even more than me. She she has two jobs. She's very She's hungry. not married to you. Because she's not married to me. <laughs> so but see this is another thing we already talked about too. That once we get married, she's gonna keep working and I'm gonna keep working. Once she gets married to you, she doesn't need to work. She doesn't need to work. <laughs> no. Yeah. 
but she prob uh, this is the thing she already said she's gonna be working. So oh, that's what man. she said to you because she wants you to marry her. Well, I told you the reason we're getting married is because of the papers. If she I know papers, what you said, married. but you are not going to be in Los Angeles. You're going to be in some foreign country. Yeah. Far, far away from her. Yeah. Where every ex-boyfriend can call her cell phone. Right? See, this is the thing, too. I really trust her. She's very loyal. Oh, my God. And... If I want to go through her phone and check that, I can. Yeah, well, that's good. How you check her phone? Her phone is going to be in her pocketbook. Her phone bill. The statement, we can check it online. I could check it online. She could go She could go down to Virgin Megastore and pick up a prepaid yeah. phone. Many women do. And you uh, will have no control over it. Well, she's not that smart. <laughs> I wouldn't give that Oh, much. well, hang on a second here. Uh, let me say uh, hello to Mike. Mike, what did you want to say to Jose here? Hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. Hey, this guy's an idiot. Let me tell you, I was in the Navy for eight years, and I was married and got divorced through the Navy. And you know what? They go after you just as hard as any state. If he's in California, he's double screwed. And you know what? He thinks he's going to be safe while he's gone. They have this saying, Westpac Widows. She's going to be safe with every other guy on base in the housing that he's living in. So he's an idiot if he thinks he's going to be safe. Man, you need to wake up and see what it really is. You need to just go in and do what you got to do and leave the broad behind. You don't need her. It's going to be nothing but dead weight for you. Wait, you you went to the Navy and you got married before you got you got shipped out. I got married after I went to the Navy. I have I have the mis I made the mistake of having kids and getting married while I was in the Navy. And you know what? Yeah, the housing money is nice, but guess what? Just like Tom told you, she's gonna get half of it anyway. So you might as well start out on a clean slate by yourself. Charlie, you, you're making a big mistake, man. They go after you just as hard. All your chain of command, everybody, they'll go after you. They'll take her side. Yeah, and I really have thought about it, too. And the um, most important thing is, you know what? You're going to be gone on the ship for six months. I've been there, buddy, done it twice. And you know what? They get banged by every other guy that's on the base because the guys that are on shore duty, that's exactly what they do is they go after the wives that are left behind. Right. But if you think she's going to be faithful and you can trust her, you got another thing coming, pal. Well, see, I've been with her for two years. How long have you been with your girlfriend or whoever you married before? I got rid of that broad. I haven't been with her for over five years, and it's the best thing I ever did. Before and you know what? I was with her through high school and got married. She didn't, I, as far as I know, she didn't cheat on me, but you don't know that. Hi, Mike. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let me get Isela on the phone. Isela, what did you want to say to Jose? Hi. Actually, Hi. I wanted to agree with Mike that was just on. You're an idiot. You have no idea what you're getting into. Let me tell you, I was in the Navy for four years, and all of those wives cheat, every single one of them. The second you get on that boat and you go out on duty, on tour, they're in the bars, they're going out dancing, they're getting together, and they're using your money to do it, and they're spending your money and using your car on other guys. You are an idiot. You think that by getting married, you're going to get more money. $2,000 a month? $2,000 a month doesn't buy you crap. I don't know what you're thinking, but if, and it sounds like... You don't want to listen to what Tom is telling you, to what Mike is telling you, to what I'm telling you. You keep trying to come up with excuses as to why to marry her. So you should just get off the phone and marry her, get screwed, and then call Tom back and cry to him that you didn't listen and you should have listened when you had the chance. Actually, I'm thinking about doing the opposite, calling him about telling him how I went through with it and I, I did what I planned to do. <laughs> You you make oh, money. Wait wait wait. In what in about Iraq a prenup? Tom, what's your advice on on a prenup? Well, first of all, in order to get a prenup, uh, you have to uh, 
Uh, you, she has to have an attorney. Does she have an attorney? No, she doesn't have an attorney. Can you afford to pay attorneys for both of you? About how much would it be? Probably five grand a person. Five grand a person? Yeah. Dang. Anything about anything. The, the way you're going to be able to make any money for yourself is if you go in as an officer and you don't sound anywhere close to being an officer. You need education for that. You need college for that. You don't know what you're getting into. You're going in there blind. If you're going into the, to the military to get shipped off to Iraq, you're going to make enough money to support yourself and yourself only. You'll be lucky if you'll be able to buy a pair of shoes. You are not going to be able to support a family. I guarantee she will get pregnant as soon as you marry her. And I guarantee you'll be miserable. And not to mention, uh, you know, a plus on your side, there's a lot of girls that will put out for you because they're in the military and they need it. And you're going to be married and cheating on your wife as well. I've been there. I lived the life. I was in the military. And you don't get that much more money for getting married. Wait, wait. I believe men are naturally polygamous, and women in the country are naturally monogamous. Oh, 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 don't even get me started. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Your most important thing is the woman's rat. That's the second most important thing. Okay, so what's the first? Your vagina. That's definitely ahead of the rack. No vagina, the rack doesn't do any good. Okay, good point. you got to have both. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Mike. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How's it going? Do you care? Yes, I do. <laughs> how, is, how is the maker's mark on uh, Friday? Wonderful. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so you're talking about the uh, starter marriages. And, uh, yeah, uh, I recently just got married, and uh, I know you probably wouldn't uh, like that or anything, but I'm 34, and I, and I kind of got a lot out of my uh, system. And, and what, what age would you recommend a guy to get married if he was going to get married? Or, 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 okay, go ahead, sorry. I didn't say anything. I know, I know, but I was, but I was going to say something, and then, and then I wanted to give you. Okay. What are you talking about? No. What age would you recommend a guy to get married? I would not recommend it. Not at all. I don't recommend it. Okay. But I mean, I mean, uh, I don't want to harp on the fact that you've been married four times. I mean, I, uh, I don't. That's want to why I. That's that. why I know so much about it. I know, but uh, any of those marriages that you had, would they be uh, considered like a starter marriage? No, because uh, I don't intend to be married. No, but when you were married, the, f the four times, would any of your marriages fall under the category of a starter marriage? No. Every one of them I thought was going to last forever, and I never thought to myself, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just get out. No. Okay, but, uh, you know, you said... No, the answer is no. I just answered it. Don't ask it again. Yeah, but you were married right, right out of high school, 18. Actually, I was married when I was in college. Okay, 18... And you thought that that was going to last forever? When I was 18, I believed that, and I was wrong. Okay, but uh, I would uh, classify that as, a, uh, as a, a starter marriage. No, because the definition of it is when someone goes into it believing that if it doesn't work out, you'll just get a divorce. And that is not how I felt. And I'm not going to go around and around in circles with you. Bottom line, I did not see it as a starter marriage. I really thought I was going to stay married for good. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.